When Oliver Wendell Holmes said the axis of the world runs through every town and village, he could have been thinking of Cork. It's one of my favorite cities, troubled by hard times and now doing its best to smile on its 800th birthday. significant thing about Cork is this, that Cork is a celebration of people and in that it shares this same quality, the same wonderful quality with all our Irish cities, with Dublin or Belfast or Galway or Limerick and indeed with all the cities of Britain and Europe because the most beautiful thing about any city is that it is a celebration of the life of people. You see a city is so distinctively made by men and women's hands you make a city and um, if there is something distinctive about Cork, every city has its persona, its personality. So I, I wouldn't say that there's a, a particular Cork thing. Uh, we have our own distinctive characteristics. I would say that the Cork person, first of all, is an extraordinarily vivacious person. Uh, vivacious in speech, they speak quickly, uh, they have a very quick wit, uh, vivacious in gesture. Uh, they have a very strong sense of identity with their city. They really love this place with its warts and all. But there has a tremendous. But I don't think that they have any s sense of superiority or distinctiveness. You know, they are part of Ireland, but a very uh, distinctive and colourful uh, and vivacious part of Ireland. They'll tell you all kinds of terrible things about the people of Cork that they're clannish, for one, preferring their own kind to strangers. And there's some truth in that. But when the barriers are lowered and they let you in, they'll take you over, expertly, even graciously, and tell you terrible things about themselves. Cork people are an enigma. Beneath the thin veneer of sophisticated nonsense, there's warmth. They're countrified and even shy. But most of all, they're proud of their roots, proud of being Cork, born and bred. We all have our own um, loyalties to our own place. I think uh, Cork is, um, because it's very much a maritime type place, and a lot of people seem to think it has a continental flavor about it. And I think that maybe that is probably what distinguishes it from our brethren in the east and in the north. It, it is. Rather like I've often found that in places like Devon and Cornwall, you get the same type of mentality, which I think is probably a European influence, rather more than a Norman or any of the other influences that may have been. Um, what is that mentality? What, what, how would you describe it? Is it insular? Is it sensitive? What is it? Uh, I suppose uh, uh, people outside, I think, sometimes call us uh, kind of a, uh, an insular type of person, that we're, we're a close-knit community, and uh, though I personally don't agree with this, but people from outside have sometimes said, you know, that we kind of stick together down here. Well, I think first and foremost, his uh, good humour and his loyalty to his city, and of course loyalty to his country too, but he's very, very loyal to Cork. Do you find that it, because of that loyalty, he might perhaps be more self-analytic or more self-critical of the things that go on in the city? Yes, I'm certain that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm quite certain it's true. Very often with a good sense of humour, though. Well, where Dublin is concerned, I think that they're too far up the country anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really only joking there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think Dublin is, well, bigger than Cork as such, and um, they're... There must be different humours in Dublin, like in Cork, as we were saying to Billa earlier on, there are about three different dialects in Cork, which Will I will explain later. There must be about 24 different dialects in Dublin, and different moods as well, you know. 